I'd like to introduce Jay Widener. He's called a modern day Indiana Jones for his seminal research on the cross of Hende and the alchemical tradition. He's a hermetic scholar. He's written A Monument to the End of Time and Mysteries of the Great Cross of Hende. He's a filmmaker who has produced many, many films and directed many films. He produced the <clears throat> film 2012, The Odyssey, and Time Wave 2013. You are in for an amazing treat. He has tremendous knowledge in the field of 2012. I give you Jay Widener. Jay, um, how do I click through these things here? Right arrow? All right. How come I'm hitting right and left and it doesn't work? Oh, there we are. Okay. All right. So, um, hey, everybody. How you doing? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I guess it's good I'm a morning person because I always get stuck in the first slot in these things. And uh, uh, that's probably good because I get up at 5.30 in the morning and I'm wide awake by 9. <clears throat> You guys all know about the very first myth of, uh, of our culture? The very first myth of our culture. You know what myth is? Myth is col our collective psychology. Okay? So you have a myth, and the reason the myth lives on is because there's something in that myth that is so important that we... Um, keep remembering it and passing it on, generation to generation. And the first myth of our culture is the most astonishing myth of all. And in that myth is our problem. So the first myth in our culture is this. Once, for a long, long time, we lived in a garden. A beautiful garden where the animals were all nice to each other and we never hassled them and they never hassled us. All the trees were filled with fruit all the time. So no one had to work. They just picked the fruit off the tree and ate it. Well, one day, um, the first man and the first woman, Adam and Eve, we're walking through the garden and a guy came up who purported to be God and said, you can have anything in this garden that you want, but you cannot eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. And uh, Adam went away thinking that was a pretty cool deal, but Eve, she didn't like it. She was a little suspicious of why she couldn't eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. So one day she's walking by the tree, and there's a snake wrapped up the trunk. And the snake says, Psst, Eve, guess what? You can eat of the fruit of knowledge, and you're not going to die. I know the big dude told you you were going to die if you ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. But I say to you, you can eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge and you will not die. Well now Eve, being a typical woman, reaches up, pulls off the apple from the tree of knowledge, <clears throat> eats it, goes over to Adam and says, I did not die. I ate the apple and I didn't die. Here, why don't you have some? So he eats it. And he says, hey, wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to die. And they didn't die. And then the big dude gets home, and he somehow finds out that they ate of the tree of knowledge. And he destroys the whole garden, throws them out of the garden into ignorance, where they have to scrape their lives from the gravel and the hard dirt and their children are condemned, and we're condemned forever and ever. 
because our great 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 grandmother ate an apple. That doesn't sound very fair to me, but that's the way it goes. But let me contend to you, there's more to this story than we're being told. Because the apple, I want you to know the secret of the apple, is the secret to not only human destiny and the way out of the current predicament and the secret of 2012, but you will know, once you know the secret of the apple, and I will tell you the secret, that we have been condemned by an outside force who, and this is going to sound pretty radical, who is trying to convince us that he is God. And he's telling us that you must remain in abysmal ignorance forever. And if you try to climb out of that hole that I put you in, I will make your life hell. And he did. So what's this all about? <clears throat> well, I contend that this is all about a mystical secret science that's been around for thousands of years. And it's the science of truth. It's called alchemy. And alchemy is um, different than our modern science in a very important aspect. Modern science is only defined by one thing. It will not investigate anything that cannot be repeated. If, it, if, it, it, if, if you do an experiment, and that experiment turns out this way, and then you do the same experiment three weeks later, and it comes out the same way, now science is interested in this. Why does this thing keep repeating over and over, this pattern? And then they begin to extrapolate and they learn about weather systems and geology and all this from this. Great, it's a great uh, way to learn things. I'm not saying that. But alchemy is not interested in that which can be repeated. Alchemy is interested in that which only happens occasionally. In a singularity, it's called in science. In religion, it's called a miracle. Of course, you know, science has its own miracles too. For instance... None of this, according to science, would be here if it wasn't for the Big Bang. Now, the Big Bang is this idea that they're trying to convince us that everything that in the entire universe sprang out of nothing in a split second. Now, we got guys from Cornell and Princeton and Oxford all trying to convince us that the universe sprang out of nothing. And we're supposed to believe this. And we're supposed to not be surprised that at the very core of the scientific understanding, they've got to pull out a miracle. Because they can't explain anything without the miracle. You give them that one miracle, though, they're fine. Just give us that one. That one miracle, the Big Bang. We can handle all the rest. Don't worry about it. But in fact, they need a miracle, too. So the world cannot be explained easily through the scientific paradigm but it can be understood through the alchemical paradigm because the alchemical paradigm is really our, our destiny as human beings. <clears throat> now, I started out this whole journey about 30 years ago. I was a, a very cynical journalist. I was an atheist. I was, uh, didn't believe in anything, really, um, except science, sort of, and uh, even that I was a little suspicious of. And I came across a book called Mystery of the Cathedrals by an anonymous gentleman who called himself Fulcanelli. It was a book written in the 20s. And this book purported to say that there was an ancient mystical science called alchemy, which was a much further advanced form of knowledge than what we had been taught to believe. And Fulcanelli points us towards this cross that sits in a little churchyard in the south of France. And he says, that not only does this cross convey symbolically all of this great knowledge, but it also tells us when the end of our age is going to occur, which Fulcanelli tells us in 1926 is very soon, within two or three generations. So I actually got into this to disprove this whole thing, debunk it. And I got in there and I started looking at the cross of Hende, 
And uh, here I am 25 years later, and I believe it completely. There I am about uh, 15 years ago, and uh, sitting at the Cross of Hende. The Cross of Hende is a very strange monument. It has a cross on the top with this strange Latin inscription. It has the pillar. It has four signs on the bottom pedestal. One is the star. One is this fairy tale moon. One is this angry sun. And the fourth is this odd oval with these four A's in it. And we can see right away that there, these four symbols are related directly to the four symbols in the tarot deck. Number 17, the star. Number 18, the moon. Number 19, the sun. And number 20, the day of judgment. So the cross of Hende is saying that, that there's something that's going to happen real soon. And it's going to be so sudden and so shocking um, that a lot of people may not survive it, but some people will. These are images here um, from the Gothic cathedrals in France, which uh, are all about alchemy. You see the woman on the right with the uh, ladder? She's the goddess of alchemy. And the ladder has seven steps on it. <clears throat> And uh, alchemists worship the goddess of alchemy. Not that they worship her because she is the creator of the universe, but because alchemy worships the feminine principle of uh, creativity and the fact that women bear children, and they bear children in a way that's very similar to how Eve and the apple work. Hang on here. Now it's not working. Okay. It should start soon, right? Okay, so let's just enjoy some of these images for a second. Remember, these buildings were built by people who couldn't read or write. There was uh, no... no um, there was no literate education. They didn't know geometry. They didn't know math. Uh, the Catholic Church, bless its heart, had kept everyone in complete ignorance in Europe. Reading and writing was outlawed. Uh, no one could read a book unless you became a priest, and the only book you could read was the Bible. In fact, the only Bible you could read was the Bible that they censored and put out for you. Yet, around 1300, 11 or 1200, um, a group of guys came back from Jerusalem, you probably heard of them, called the Templars. And they came back and, gee, I don't know, they suddenly had a lot of money, a lot of gold, and uh, a lot of knowledge, and they began constructing these temples, these Gothic cathedrals. And these Gothic cathedrals, 500 of them went up in about 250 years in Europe. And what happened was, as these cathedrals went up, Everybody had to learn math. They had to learn geometry. They had to learn how to communicate with each other because these things had to be done because you had eight or 900 people working on one of these things and just coordinating it in its, in its own was a huge problem. Remember that if you tried to build Notre Dame in Paris today, it would cost around $400 billion if you could find the artisans, which would be dubious to say the least. Now, Paris, at the time this was built, was the size of Boulder, Colorado, about 100,000 people. You can imagine a town of Boulder, Colorado, raising $400 billion. Yet somehow they did in, in, the, in their money. And so they built these cathedrals, and they built them everywhere, almost like some kind of uh, Apollo program. Uh, they're always built on the highest hill in every town. If you go to Europe, you'll always see at the top of the highest hill, you know, the steeples of the church.